I'm going to quickly go over putting tolerances into your model. So when we're doing our 3D model and adding dimensions, we can add tolerances. Now you can bring these through into your drawing, but the other the other good added benefit of that is you can actually use it to check your design. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a very simple shaft going into, let's say, the hole of an end block. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is model the shaft. So I'm going to put a circle on the centre point, 50mm diameter. Now what you can do is when you're editing this dimension, you've got this little arrow here. And in here we have tolerance, and it will bring up this box just here. So what we can do is in your tolerance type, you do have limits and fits. So if you know it's going to be a G6 or an H7 or something like that, then we can put that in which is obviously exactly the same as what's in your machinery's handbook but for demonstration purposes I'm going to use a symmetric tolerance so I'm going to be silly and say 25 which is obviously half the diameter so we probably wouldn't get an acceptable tolerance of plus or minus 25 but just for the purposes of this demonstration so I'm going to press OK when I press the tick you can see this actually changes to 50 plus or minus 25 I'm going to extrude this shaft by let's say 250mm and I'm going to do it symmetrically or about the mid plane and we've now got this shaft so what we can actually do is we can go into uh, manage and in parameters obviously this is where all the dimensions are that you've placed during your model so D1 50mm that is the diameter now in this tolerance box so let's use um, the taper angle for the extrusion there degrees I can't actually change if I change plus or minus it just changes that to zero because it's not actually changing whereas if we go into this tolerance here and I change it to say like the minus if I then click somewhere else it refreshes and you can see it's gone at the minus tolerance the model value is actually 25 and you can see my model has changed so if you keep your eyes on the model I'll change that back to the plus so of course that will be 75 mil and you can see it's then actually shows in the model so we've then got in here we can do plus minus median and nominal and that's a tolerance in the model. So what I'm also going to do is just do uh, like a very basic end block. So let's just do, um, let's do a polygon, four-sided. Let's make it, let's just make it uh, 120. And we'll put a circle. Uh, you should redo this as a whole, but just show the very quickly we're going to put exactly the same on here so just to show you it works exactly the same so manage parameters and again we've got that 50 mil, and we can change it to the higher size and you can see that the hole's got bigger and again if we change the tolerance to the lower size it goes down smaller and now what, you, what I was meaning when I said you can use it to check your design is let's say we have um, let's change the tolerance there just to be a bit more realistic, 5 mil. And then let's go back to this one. Also going to change this one. Let's change that to plus or minus 3 mil. I'm just going to save that one. Call that shaft. Save that one, call it end block. What I'm going to do now is start an assembly. And I'm going to place in, let's say, the end block first, and then we're going to place in the shaft as well. So now we have in our, basically, this is our shaft that goes into this end block. So now what we can do is let's uh, start constraining this. So let's say so this is inserted here, and it's in, I don't know, 25 mil. I would make it 50. So what we can now do is if you double click on, uh, let's double click on the end block first. That takes you into the part environment. Now, where this is greyed out, we can see there's actually an overlap. So what we can say is, um, in our parameters, we can say that that 50 is actually going to be 
on the high side, so it's going to be the highest end of the tolerance. And we're going to select done and return. And we're going to say also the shaft is at its highest tolerance, for example. And we can see there with the grayed out area, you can see, oh, yeah, that's okay, we still got space. Or the other way you can use it is let's say this was it, the minus. So we go into parameters. So this was at its lower limit, and the hole it's going into is at its higher limit. We can then say, well, that gap looks too much. Um, so therefore, we need to change the design by changing the tolerances. So you can see now how you can actually use this to help you model and help you design all of your components. So it's a really, it's an easy technique. It adds two seconds to all of the dimensions that are critical to something like this. It allows you to look at your design and just say, you know what, that looks too slack, um, or it's overlapping, we don't want an interference fit, we want a loose fit. But again, if you are doing fits for things like shafts, I would I would use the recommended ones such as your G6 and your H7 and the sort of thing that's in your machinery's handbook under limits and fits. But just to show you, you can model using tolerances. And just to show you, if you did want to measure, say, the distance, you can measure and then you can click on that. M is for measure on the keyboard. You can click that face. And you can click that face and you can see there's a little blue line which is telling you it's 4 mil. So you've got 4 mil all the way around. So you know there's the 8 mil difference, which is, of course, from the 5 and the 3 uh, in our tolerances. And you can maybe say 4 mil is too slack. It's going to roll about too much. Let's change the design. So that's how you would use it to enhance your design.